Well, thanks for getting on to the Thursday evening edition of Hogan's European Outlook. There is a lot of things going on at the moment with the weather. Not only are we starting to see the temperatures warming up across the British Isles, but we've got a lot of things going on with the stratosphere at the moment. Uh, we've got one, uh, even two waves of major warming taking place over the next uh, week to 10 days, and something that we need to continue watching, of course. We've also got uh, the Man Julian oscillation going into a fairly pronounced mode, and um, as you can see here, so it's it's going from uh, phases one into phases two, into phases three, and becoming very amplified. Actually, if you notice here over the Indian Ocean, so <clears throat> is the potential of this what is helping dictate the pressure from the troposphere up into the stratosphere? Who knows? Um, but very very complex meteorology physics atmospheric science that's going on at the moment here so now is the time to follow my channel and we keep up to date with the de latest developments as they happen here so of course i've made the prediction back at the beginning of the winter season of what to think the outcome of the next 90 day period would be uh, and of course, we are now going live through the the reality of the of of the pattern, and seeing the developments that take place, and then we'll look back and see how the forecast matched up with reality. So, the latest run of the GFS for the stratospheric polar vortex. So this is a way up at ten millibars, and we continue to see this stretching warming take place over the North Pacific. The other warming take place over the over Europe. We're squeezing it. We're forcing this stretch all the way d deep into Asia, all the way down into the almost the subtropical Atlantic. As we play through the next ten days or so, we see wave one of strong warming taking place. Now, this is for Sunday, the twenty second of January. Here, so we, what we are essentially doing is we're pushing the vortex down into the North Atlantic here, also in the North America, also in the western portions of Europe here. Notice here that we do have the strong winds here blowing straight across the Arctic region here. This is not a sudden stratospheric warming, I don't think anyway. And we also do not see a split of the vortex. One piece of the vortex goes into North America, one going into Europe. We're essentially just kind of fortunate south and southeast over our region of the northern hemisphere continue to play through the loop here you can see wave number two stronger than the first pushing against the vortex once again notice it doesn't split it but we do have a hell of a pressure being put on the vortex away up at the 10 millibar level notice here the core of the vortex actually sits right over the british isles do we see uh, stratospheric uh, polar clouds developing overhead with this type of setup? Possibly, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but that is about as strong of a pressure as really you can put on it. Uh, does it does it reverse the mean zone of winds? That's going to be, of course, the big question. So, it's all very well looking at the 10 millibar level. But if we look at the 50 millibar level, which is the lower portion of the stratosphere and becomes a lot more reflective of the all-important tropospheric polar vortex, which is the vortex in a sense that involves our weather pattern. It's all very well looking at the stratosphere, but if they're not coupled with the troposphere, what goes on at 10 millibars in a sense cannot matter. It doesn't really matter. It's once that filters down through from stratosphere into the troposphere, that is when it starts to have an impact on our weather. The ten mil, the five hundred millibar level, or eighteen thousand feet above our above our heads, that is essentially from about eighteen thousand feet down to the surface. That is our weather, and until we get the response from stratosphere down into the troposphere, in a sense, you could be talking till the summertime about this. And we don't really see any impact. So I want to look at the 50 millibar level here and show you what I think is um, important to look at. So this is the initial. This is at the moment. And in essence, folks, 
This represents a, a positive North London oscillation, in my opinion. So we've got the, the ridge over the northwest of North America. That would send cold air into North America. We've got the um, we've got the the area of low pressure, if you will, sitting to the north. It basically over the eastern portion of the Arctic Ocean here, extending down over Greenland, eastern Greenland, into the North Atlantic and Iceland here, bringing very cold conditions, of course, to Iceland. But we've also got this warming at, at 50 millibars over Europe here, and this, in a sense, reflects quite nicely the weather pattern that we've got going at the moment. We've got our air now going to start coming in from the west to southwest as opposed to the north. So therefore, we're going to lose the cold pattern that we've got at the moment here and revert back to something a little milder. If we skip to a week from now, so this is 168 hours, go to the 10, 50 millibar level, and you can see that we're relatively similar to what we have at the moment here. Stronger warming, notice here from east the East Asia coast, down into the northwest portion of North America, We've also got this um, this cold pool over the eastern portion of the Arctic Ocean, encompassing much of Greenland, encompassing the northeast Atlantic, Iceland and whatnot. We've got that uh, warmer pool over the southwest of Europe here. That, to me, does not reflect anything interesting in our cold. Um, so keep in mind what's going on within the stratosphere, the strong warming, wave one happening in the next you know several days, then wave two towards the end of the month. Let's go to 10 days from now. And we can see here that there's some other interesting aspects now starting to show up. Notice in 10 days time, this is of course the one operational run, so it's just one model run, but I'm trying to give you specifics, details, a little bit more explanation as well as to what I think is gonna happen and what we need to see happen in terms of seeing a cold pattern during the month of February. Remember the time frame here, uh, you know, 10 to 14 days after we get, if we do get a sun stratospheric warming, the response doesn't come until about the best part of two weeks after that. Keep that in mind. But notice here at the 50 millibar level, the more important level as opposed to 10 millibars, we notice here that we have warming now start to propagate from the east coast of Asia across the top of North America and in towards the Baffin Straits here. What I would like to see happen would be this lobe of cold air over the eastern Arctic, over um, you know northwestern Europe, push slightly further east. And I think that would start to, to change the 500 millibar mean winds winds in the in that level, and we start to reverse things. So in a sense, what I think we would need to see would need to start to see this warming pushing closer to Greenland, and this trough over Europe more. And I think if we did get a split in the vortex, which the models, a lot of them aren't showing it, some are. We would start to see this warmth over towards Greenland and a lobe of cold like we're seeing here over the North America side to the to the to the west side of this warm um, warm section here. Very very complex stuff. Very fascinating stuff. And um, you know it's something that we need to appreciate that the the complexity of the overall situation that's going on at the moment here. Let's skip to 312 hours from now, so we're pushing towards the end of the month. And notice here that we still have that warming over the Baffin Straits, over the Canadian archipelago, for example, here. That, to me, folks, is not overly favourable for what we want to see in terms of like a beast from the east, like we've seen at the end of February, early March 2018, for example, here. So this is something that needs to continue closely monitoring, but I I simply cannot turn around and say that we're going to get a beast from the east in you know three weeks time based on what I'm saying at the moment. We need to see more things change in order for that to happen. Now this is the vertical wave uh, activity flux here. This is from Judah Cohen, and you can see here 
this is almost like a, a cross section of the atmosphere going from the surface right the way up to 10 millibars. Notice here, and the dates are along the bottom. Notice here that we start to see from about the 18th, which of course was yesterday, we're starting to see that warming taking place. That influence of that push of warmth from Asia towards the pole within the upper levels of the atmosphere. You notice here that we've got a little bit of a strengthening with the blues. Then we've got this uh, first initial push of very, very strong warming from Asia towards the polar vortex, pushing it into the Atlantic. Then it looks as if around the 2nd of February, we've got a, that secondary wave of strong warming here. But notice here that we aren't seeing the reflection down towards the lower portion of the atmosphere into the troposphere. So we've got the strong warming taking place within the 10 millibar level. Until we see these reds filtering all the way down the, almost the surface here, uh, there's a lower probability of seeing everything coming together the way we want to see it here. So, like I say, you know, time and time again, each and every day we will monitor this situation and see what happens here or every second day because I don't want to just, you know, repeat myself day after day. That's just going to become very monotonous indeed. But that's the latest with regards to the stratosphere and a little bit more detail about how it's more complicated than just looking at 10 millibars and seeing strong warming, seeing a reversal of zone winds, etc., etc. We need to see the downward propagation of energy through the column to start reflecting the 500 millibar pattern here but certainly very very interesting times that's for sure and we need to keep an eye, an, an eye on that um, as we go forward here a uh, two meter temperature normally is for the european continent very cold across iceland as i mentioned yesterday we're still cooling things down across scotland warm than average southern scotland south very warm compared to average across central europe we've had all-time record january temperatures in southeastern europe in recent times we are going to still see the cooling taking place so we are going to push these blues slightly further down possibly but of course with the cold lingering into the early portion of the next week across southeastern england we are going to peel away at some of this warmth across parts of uh, particularly southern and southeastern uh, great britain over the next day uh, we while here average temperatures compared to normal across ireland here Looking at the GFS, this is the latest overview chart here. So the situation is that we've got an area of low pressure pushing south. That has warmer air associated with it. So the temperatures actually across the north, as of recording, are milder. These were the temperatures last night, by the way. With strong winds coming in out of the north, temperatures did not drop as low as I thought they might have done. But here's the current temperatures. And notice here for, you know, 10 to 6 at night, actually not that cold across the north because of the milder air associated with that area of low pressure temperatures will come down overnight i think with clear skies and light winds but we'll keep an eye on that playing through the loop over the next few days what we're going to see is we're going to see these winds over the north atlantic associated with low pressure near greenland they are going to eventually start to move into the northwest of the uk bringing the milder air to the north but notice here the stretched out area of high pressure really stretching from the Azores all the way up to uh, Scandinavia. These uh, That area of high pressure is going to keep the chill going with frost and fog developing here. But notice the squeeze and the isobars indicate stronger winds, southwesterly winds. But with snow on the ground, the temperatures aren't going to rise possibly as warm as you would think. It would still feel rather raw, I think where the snow lies but we are eventually going to see that melting um entirely here playing through the loop it looks as if the area of high pressure is going to become more of a dominant player i think through the course of next week we've got that's some of the model runs are actually indicate that that high pushes slightly to the west meaning we're going to pull in more of a northwesterly wind so a chilly air um air mass coming in direction and notice here that the area of high pressure just becomes the dominant player through the remainder of January. So drier conditions are going to become more established, I think, I think through the course of next week, which is, of course, going to be welcome news for many people. And we will continue to watch what's going on in the stratosphere. So a lot of things um, to consider, a lot of things to look at. So I do encourage you, if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button and let's watch this day by day. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday evening. I'll see you again hopefully tomorrow with more. Bye for now.